Hey guys, welcome back to Shifting Lanes. Before we get into today's video, I wanna take a second and ask you guys your opinion on something. Yes, someone actually asking the YouTube commenters, the internet as a whole, for their opinion. Because, frankly, the internet's just way too shy. They never comment on anything. What do you think is the best YouTube project car ever? Uh, there's a lot of really cool YouTube project cars out there. You have uh, OGs like Mighty Car Mods, who's made a lot of really cool cars. Their sister channel, The Skid Factory, has also done a lot of really cool stuff. Tavares' Twin Turbo Lamborghini, B is for Builds, uh, LS Swap Lamborghini. There's a lot of really awesome stuff out there, and frankly, I can't watch it all. So you guys, you've seen a lot of really awesome stuff, you know, here and and, and elsewhere, obviously. Um, I wanna know, what do you think is the best YouTube project car of all time? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below, but on to today's video. Welcome back to part two of the top 10 list of the best, worst, and just awful M3, cars we have ever owned. Uh, if you missed last week's video, it's up here. Uh, we took a look at the two worst cars we've ever owned. They're great cars when they work. Ours mm, very rarely worked as they, as they should have or as they came from the factory. But today we're gonna talk about some bargains, some of the most fun cars we've had, and even one car that uh, I sincerely regret selling for a multitude of reasons. And we're gonna kick off today's show with number eight on our list of best cars or worst cars we've ever owned, and that is Hansen's Subaru BRZ. These are great little cars. They handle well, and they really kind of turned the automotive industry on its head with its philosophy. And that was, it wasn't designed to be the fastest. It wasn't designed to be the loudest. It wasn't designed to be basically the uh, last word in performance. You sat a bunch of engineers down and you said, we want to design a fun car. It doesn't have to set records. It just needs to be fun for what people actually do with their cars. And that is drive them on public roads. We don't just take cars and go immediately to the track and that's where our cars live. We use them in the real world and this is what the BRZ FRS GT86 was designed to do. It was designed to be fun. And as an offshoot of that, a lot of them found their way uh, into grassroots, drive race, drive back home kind of events like autocross. If you're not familiar with autocross, First of all, where the hell have you been? It's a great way to get into motorsport. It's done in an empty parking lot so that you don't have to worry about running off into sand or a wall. Worst thing you can hit is, uh, is a cone. And while cones can do damage, it's not nearly as bad as, well, concrete. Hansen chose the BRZ because there's a spec BRZ class. Minimal modifications, basically suspension, wheels, tires, an exhaust if you want one, but really not a performance one, just basically for sound, and away you go, go have fun, go racing. And that's exactly what Hansen did with it. He found autocross and he actually developed a huge passion for it. The big problem with our BRZ and a lot of BRZs in general is the engine. Now they're not bad engines, you can get decent power out of them, but they're not the strongest things in the world. And ours, six days in ownership, uh, left Hansen stranded on the side of the road and on the back of a tow truck, which is something that seems to be a reoccurring theme with some of Hansen's cars is him being stranded and his car being towed somewhere. The car breaking down was through no fault of Hansen's. Basically, these F-820s suffer from oil starvation if not maintained properly. Ours probably didn't get the maintenance it really deserved uh, before we owned it, and six days in ownership, it went bang. Hansen, through the help of Subaru, got a new engine, everything put in, the car was basically as close to new as it possibly could have been, and it cost us nothing, which was awesome. In hindsight, I think it would have been a lot more well, let's just say awesome, to kick the FA to the curb and go out and get uh, an actual engine, something like an LS maybe, and have four or 500 relatively inexpensive horsepower to a rear wheel drive light car with a manual gearbox. Uh, in hindsight, we probably could have kept the car, but at the time it wasn't garnering views, so we sold it for the S60R, which, it was the second most problematic car we've ever owned. I know, a Subaru with an engine replacement, that's, that, that wasn't even the top of the list. It was 
my E46 M3. That was, Hansen got the S60R. He since sold the S60R for the next car on our list, which is a brand spanking new, the newest car we have ever owned, and that is a Hyundai Veloster N. If you're not familiar with it, it's Hyundai's hottest hatchback. It makes, uh, I think, somewhere around 280 horsepower. It is loud, it is brash, it is aggressive, it's in your face. It's not exactly a car I thought Hanson would be into because Hanson's sensible. He often, well, let's just face it, he often, we, him and I butt heads because I'm a little too out there for him. He's a mechanical engineer. He uses sound logic, reason, and all this other stuff. And he ends up with a, well, let's face it, a boy racer car. And that leads me to why the, uh, why the, the Veloster isn't higher up on the list. Number one, well, we just haven't had it for very long. Uh, thanks in large part to winter and summer tires. Greg and I had didn't drive it before the world took a giant shit on itself. Uh, and obviously we can't drive it now because we're all supposed to, you know. At any rate, uh, it's a great car. It's a very visceral experience. It's Hansen has described it as a poor man's Civic Type R. And it's not that far off from a Type R to be 100% honest with you. It's got great suspension. It's got a limited slip dip up front. It's got great brakes, great tires. I mean, it's a little performance weapon. It just it just needs some love, which that's where Hanson's sensible side is kind of kind of coming to play. Uh, he's too sensible to throw a tune or a downpipe or an exhaust on it because he wants to compete in the slower class of autocross, which part of me can't blame him for. Uh, it becomes more about driver skill than driver performance mods, but I'm me. I want more power. It's, we all want more power, right? It's just the way it is. But not to say that car won't be getting some power upgrades down the line. It's just so brand new that Hanson hasn't had a chance to drive it much, and let alone autocross it. It's let's just say a work in progress, but I can't wait to see where that car goes because I think if I did this list a year later, that car would be much, much higher on the list. On to our next car, which for me personally is probably the car I regret selling the absolute most out of any car I've really ever owned. Well, was my 2002 Lexus IS300. I had had that car for about nine years before we even even introduced it on the channel. Uh, it was just, it's a great car. They're not super heavy. They look way ahead of their time. They look modern today, let alone back in 2002. Uh, the interior, same way. It's a symphony in simplicity, but really, really, really good design. It has one of the best instrument clusters ever, let alone back in the early 2000s. It was just an awesome car. And I haven't even gotten to the best bit about the IS300. The absolutely best part about it is it came with, from factory, a 2JZ. Everybody knows that the 2JZ is quite possibly, if not, the best engine Japan has ever made. And I know there's some Honda boys who are sitting here saying K20, K24, B16B, or your Nissan guys who are love the SR20, even though it sounds like crap or the RBs, then you have your Dorito guys who, if it doesn't have a rotary, it doesn't matter, even though apex seals and side seals and so on and so on. I don't think the 13B sounds all that great. I think you need to at least have three to four rotors to make a rotary sound epic. The IS300 came with the GE, which isn't the GTE, which isn't the engine everybody loses their shit over. But, most people don't know that the GE in itself is a very impressive engine. You can get 500 horsepower on stock internals all day long. Now, 500 horsepower in a car that looks as good as the IS300, drives as good, handles as good, and sounds as good as a straight six can, because straight sixes sound absolutely awesome because of various reasons I don't have time to get into, but they are just awesome engines and what I wanted to do with it, which may have been the wrong approach or the right approach, but at any rate, I wanted to have 300 plus naturally aspirated horsepower at the crank. And, you know, header, head work, cams, springs, retainers, individual throttle bodies. The thing was going to rip. It was 7,500 RPM redline at least. It was going to sound amazing. Now, I know 300 horsepower does not sound a lot. 
like a lot. Uh, I mean, we live in a world where it's thousand horsepower or bust, thousand horsepower thumbnails get all the clicks and stuff. But let me kind of backtrack and 300 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. Evo 9s, Evo 8s, 300 horsepower in a mid-size car. BMW 335i, 300 horsepower, mid-size luxury sedan. Subaru STIs, the list goes on and on and on. And those cars are awesome fun from factory with 300 horsepower. The problem was is that to get there it was a rather expensive ordeal. And at the end of the day, for the money, 300 horsepower was, yeah, the smarter route would have been to go how to get 500 horsepower for the absolute cheapest amount and go from there. Turbo kit, new transmission because the, uh, the 55, W55 in the Lexus from factory basically takes a crap on itself after about 300 horsepower, 300 foot pounds, maybe a little bit more, but they're not the best transmissions in the world. So turbo kit R154 probably is the best inexpensive uh, transmission. If you want six gears, a CD009 would have probably been a good, uh, good alternative there. And uh, you have to get an aftermarket ECU, blah, blah, blah. At any rate, um, it would have been uh, a much less expensive build and uh, probably would have gotten a, a couple more eyeballs. That being said, I still want to play around with an NA2J. I just, you know, need that thing that we all lust after and that is unlimited funds. And right now, don't have them. Working on it, don't have it. Also a garage would be nice too. But the reason I regret selling that car is because it, it had so much sentimental value. It was the first car I bought really with my money. Basically, I got my first real job and I went out and I bought that car. I I loved that car. I loved the way it looked. I loved everything about it. But at the end of the day, YouTube for shifting lanes, while it's afforded us an amazing opportunity to go and have some just stupid fun doing stuff like the Dragon, auto shows, car shows, blah, 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 down the line, um, it's still business. and. The IS at the time, the direction I was taking just didn't make sense for the business. And I will, I promise you, I will have another one. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, first and foremost, you guys are staying safe out there. It's a crazy time right now. Uh, I hope that these videos, for however long they are, can offer you a little bit of distraction from the world, you know, being an absolute mess right now. But I hope everyone's, again, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to hit us up on social media, we're at Shifting Lanes or me personally, at Chennedy83. Don't forget, leave it in the comments below. I want to know what your best YouTube build of all time was. Uh, maybe I'll put together a series uh, of those cars, ranking the best in, in my opinion or Shifting Lanes opinion, but definitely leave those comments below. If you want to help support the channel, it's real simple. Teespring right below me. Get yourself an awesome t-shirt, hoodie, cell phone case, mug, sticker, a whole mess of really, really, really awesome stuff down there that one, you get something awesome out of it, and two, all the proceeds we put back into making really what we find fun content for you guys. That's pretty much a wrap, guys, and uh, I'll catch you next time.